Let's begin with this prayer. Glory God, you are the giver of all we possess, the source of all our blessings. We thank you and praise you. Thank you for the gift of our children. Help us to set boundaries for them and yet encourage them to explore. Give us the strength and courage to treat each day as a fresh start. May our children come to know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. May your Holy Spirit help them to grow in faith, hope, and love, so they may know peace, truth, and goodness. May their ears hear your voice. May their eyes see your presence in all things. May their lips proclaim your word. And may their hearts be your dwelling place. May their hands do works of charity. May their feet walk in the way of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Iba pala mag-invite yung presidente, you know? He invited me last November. Nung una, sabi ko, uh, nung una, I feel okay. It's just a conference. Nung palapit ng palapit, may mga sinesend sa akin. Sinesend niya sa akin yung, yung, ano ba yun, yung heart, war, yung, yung sabi niya kanina sa introductions na ayaw ko pakinggan kaya hindi ko, matindi, ma, hindi ko, ma, hindi ko matandaan eh, kasi natatakot ako sa mga introductions niya. <laughs> But let me do first a, a, what's this is, a disclaimer. No? This is not a doctrinal thing. No? Hindi ito tungkol sa reliyon. No? I, I might be speaking on the, on the perspective of a priest, pero hindi ito tungkol sa reliyon. Hindi ito tungkol sa pagiging katoliko. But ito ay tungkol, most probably, is on us living as Christian, living and following Christ. Kaya walang doctrinal thing dito. For those who are not Catholic, so, hindi ko kayo pinukundis sa mga yung Catholic. No? Kaya, uh, uh, that's why we try to open our heart with this, uh, with everything that we will be sharing. I don't want to teach you, but I want to journey with you. No? And I think that's, that's, that's what keep on, that's one thing that I keep on telling myself, no? I want to journey with them. Journey with them. Kasi maganda pang kalakbay. No? Mas maganda yung kalakbay. Because, when we are joining with one another, we're learning from one another. I'm not an expert of being a parent because I'm not a parent. No? Walang, at wala pa namang chismis na meron akong anak. No? So, so, and I tell you, kung may naririnig kayo yung chismis, hindi totoo yun. Mm-hmm. Kasi baog ako. I'm just, just kidding. I'm just kidding. Ay, naka, naka-video. I-edit mo yun, President. <laughs> you know, when we were talking, I we were talking about the topic. So I said, "It's living the gospel of Jesus, living the gospel of Jesus." And I think that is one thing that uh, all of us wish to follow: to live the gospel of Jesus. Follow by, and in this conference, it's all about parents, teachers, how to live the gospel of Jesus as parents, as teacher, or. Basically, as parents, because the, the teachers are second parents of students. No? Sila yung pangalawang uh, magulang kasi kung titignan nga natin, mas matagal yung kasama nila yung mga bata in a day. Because children will enter, will, will be in the school for at least eight hours. No? Minsan, ten, pag, pag dito na kumakae. Minsan, mas mahigit pa. Yung iba kasi dahil sa traffic, mas maaga na sa school at mas late nang umuuhi. And then yung parents, kasama lang sa umaga, sa gabi, and during weekends. So, all of us here are parents. So, living the gospel of Jesus. And I think the best way to, to, to fulfill our obligation as parents is we look on Jesus. No? Not that Jesus is teaching us how to be parent. But we could learn in the life of Jesus to enhance our being a parent. Especially to our children. Especially this time. Challenging yung time ngayon. No? Challenging yung time ngayon. Sa ibang parents, nung panahon nyo, eh, yung social maliit na cellphone. Ngayon, yung social, yung malaking cellphone na. 
I saw a video in, sa, sa, sa YouTube, mayroong mga bata, grade, grade 1, 2, and 3, binibigyan ng analog cellphone, yung dating cellphone ng 90s, tinatanong sila, what do you think about this cellphone? Sabi na mabal, is that a remote control? No, see? Kasi yung cellphone nila ngayon, wala ng keypad. No? Touch screen na. Kaya, it's a challenging time. Mas matindi yung generation gap between parents and children this time. Unlike nung siguro nung mga bagulang dito, nung tayo lumalaki, yung generation gap meron, pero yung technology, hindi ganun, hindi gaano ka, kalaki yung difference. No? Kasi, we grow up, no? yung mga 90s, 80s, TV. Yung computer nagsisimula lang dun sa Pilipinas. When we were growing, when we were growing up on, on by television, watch it a bit, ayun yung mga bata na they're growing up with tablet already. No? Minsan, yung anak nyo pang nagtuturo sa inyo. ba? Hindi kayong, sino nagturo sa inyo mag-post sa Facebook? ba? Yung anak nyo. ba? Sino naghanap sa inyo ng video sa YouTube? Yung anak mo. No? Kaya nga kung minsan nasisita kayo ng anak niya eh, Mami, mag-PM ka, mag-private message, huwag yung public. Kasi minsan yung mga magulang mag-message, Anak, saan ka na? Late ka na? Pero nasa timeline. <laughs> Kaya napapah- napapahiya yung anak. I want to begin with the concept of Deus Caritas S. God is love. You know, in John, in 1 John 4, 6, it says, God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. You know, when we follow Jesus, you know, we should have this love of God. You know, if we want others to see God in us, we have this, we should have this love in our heart. You know, in the first encyclical of Benedict XVI, no? I, in the encyclical of Benedict XVI, entitled God is Love, he says, I wish, this, I wish in my first encyclical to speak of love which God lavishes upon us and which we turn, and which we in turn must share with others. There's no such thing as love of self. Kasi hindi yun love. Kasi yung love is always, there is somebody to receive that act of love. Hindi pwede yung sarili mo yung tatanggap din. Hindi yung love. It's not love at all. Because when you speak about love, there should be always somebody who will receive that act of love. So, I think the very message that the Lord is trying to tell us is all about love. Ang ganda ng picture na yan, I was searching for love of a family. No? Kamay ng tatay, forming a heart, kamay ng, ng, ng nanay, and then yung kamay ng anak. We so, love is the center of the teachings of Christ. Kaya hindi siya, sabi ko nga kanina, hindi doctrinal. Kasi it's a universal teaching is about love. Kahit anong religion, it speaks about love. No? Kahit yung mga religion that are not Christians, they speak about love. And when we go in the Gospel of Jesus, lahat yun itong kurs sa pagmamahal. We go back to the commandment of Jesus. It says, you shall love the Lord God the Lord your God with all your hearts, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind and your and your neighbor as yourself. Summarize the Ten Commandments. It's all about love. Love God. Love others. It's all about love. You know, the Paschal Mystery, the Paschal Mystery of the Lord, is a Catholic belief. The Paschal Mystery. Paschal Mystery means a bit the, the, the life, hmm? Jesus, the life, the life of Jesus, when Jesus suffered, when Jesus died on the cross, and when Jesus resurrected, it's all about love. It's all about love. 
Yung iba, no? When we look at the cross, Jesus hung in the cross, no? It's all about love. It's not about dahil gusto natin, gusto natin makita yung taong nasasaktan. No, it's all about the love of God. At yung parang sinasabi natin, malugo pag magbahal ang Diyos. Kasi handa siyang, handa, handa niyang tumagas ang dugo sa katawan niya para i, iparamdam yung yung pangmamahal niya sa atin. So, the, the works of Jesus is all about love. And so, love is the focal point of a Christian life. Ito yung essential sa, sa, pag, sa pamumuhay ng isang Kristiyano. If you want to build a community, a Christian community, it should be centered on love. Because when it is centered on love, it is centered on Jesus, it is centered on God. Pag walang pagmamahal, you could call it a community, a Christian community. If we want to build a Christian community in the school, there should be love. If we want to have a Christian family, there should be love. Hindi yung bahay parang boarding house lang. You know? Kaya yan yung pagkaiba ng boarding house at tutuong bahay. Kasi sa boarding house, pwede walang love. Papasok ka lang, kakain ka dyan, tutulog ka, alis ka, wala kang pakes, katabi mo. Kasi hindi naman necessary yung love sa boarding house. Pero hindi pwede sa isang pamilya, sa isang bahay, that there will be absence of love. If you want a Christian family, there should always be love in that family. And so, because of that, parents should live the love of Christ. Hindi pwedeng magulang ka, and then you aspire to have a Christian family, we don't have this love in our heart. And for us Christian, the very example of love is Christ. Sabi ni St. John Paul II, to maintain a, a joyful family requires much from both the parents and the children. Each member of the family has to become, in a special way, the servant of others. You could only be servant for others if you know how to love. If you have love in your heart. Kasi, we will be talking later the different languages of love. No? No? Pag hindi kasi pag walang, ang hirap maglingkod pag walang pagmamahal. Diba? Teachers. May hirap mag-overtime pag walang pagmamamahal. Kasi, pag walang pagmamamahal, sasagutin mo bago ka mag-overtime, magkano ang bayan? Diba? Ganon din. Pag walang pagmamahal in a family, bago kang gumawa ng bagay, anong kapale? Anong kapale? And sometimes, there might be love, but we are more focused on ano yung kapale? That's why, ang hirap, ang hirap gawin yung mga ginagawa natin in a home kung walang pagmamahal. That's why there are things that are done by parents na hindi matumbasan ng pera because that is love. That is love. And I think that is a very important for a parent to have love in his or in her heart. Kasi pag wala, manunumbat na tayo. Manunumbat na tayo. In a relationship, pag wala na yung pagmamahal, magsisimulan ka naman doon. Ako nabayad ng kuryente, ako nabayad ng tubig, ako nabayad ng tuition fee. Ano pang babayaran ko? Ako na lang lahat. When love fades away, we start already to be selfish. Pag walang pagmamahal, kaya nga walang pagmamahal sa sarili because it is not love. It is selfishness. 
Because when you love only yourself, you only do things for yourself. Kaya ang hirap gumawa para sa iba. It's difficult for us to be servant for others. Kung hindi kayo mahal ng presidente nyo, hindi yan magkakameraman siya. Saan kayo nakakita ang presidente yung ganyan? Diba? Sigurado uupo yan dyan sa harap. No? At yung mga teacher niya, papaypay sa kanya. <laughs> Tapos tatanong niya, Mr. President, ano bang gusto mo? <laughs> Maraming magpapasipsip dyan. <laughs> When we love others, we can do beyond uh, things beyond our capacity. Kahit nakakapagod, okay lang. Sabi ni Pope Francis, what do you mean by love? It is, is it only a feeling? A psychophysical state? Certainly, if death is it, then we cannot build any, on, on anything solid. But if, it, but if instead love is a relationship, then it is a reality that grows. pag feeling lang wala lang nga talaga di ba Kasi anyway yung love kasi kung minsan akala na natin love minsan ini-equate na natin yung gusto mo yung like mo is love already Iba kasi yung love Kasi kung minsan yun, lahat kayo dito karamihan dito sa inyo merong forever no kasi may, 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 may love life. Pag yung life, pag ay gusto kita, pag natapos niya, pag umalis siya, wala na. Kasi it's just a feeling. But love is beyond feeling. It is a reality. That's why we were able to build our family because there's love. We were able to, live, to build a community because love is a reality that we could build something. That's why we could create community, we could, we could create a family, we could create friendship, we could create something out of it. Kasi kung wala, kung feeling lang yan, it's like, this, like other feelings. Lilitas din yan, mawawala din yan. Parang gutom lang yan. Diba? So we look on the gospel of Jesus how to live his love. And then with the help of, maybe you have encountered this book, the book is The Five Languages for Parents by Gary Chapman. But I will use his five language of, of, of uh, uh, five love languages for parents, but I will try to relate it on the different accounts on, in the life of Jesus. And how Jesus lived. Ako baga, it's not an end. E, hindi naman yung saktong-saktong example. But we know we could find something in Jesus. So there are five languages. We try to check on, our, on ourselves. First, it's words of affirmation. You know, ito yung madali lang naman to eh. It is a language of love. Pero madali, but we easily take it for granted. Di ba? Sometimes our children will go to our home, will go home and say, Mom, I got a perfect score! Okay. Okay. the last time you said, Uy, Anna, congratulations, ang galing-galing mo. Why did you say, Ay, Anna, very good. From 75 to 76. <laughs> Or baka naman kasi, from 75, pagdating niya sa 75, 76 lang! Galing lang tayo. No, we fail to affirm our children. And I think it's a challenge for parents and teachers. Affirmation. 
Ang daling gawin, pero madalas nakakalimutan. We look on Jesus. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Alam ng ni Jesus, anak siya ng Diyos. Alam niya Diyos siya. But in the baptism of Jordan, after John baptizing Jesus, the heaven opened and and the Spirit came down in the form of a dove and there was a voice. And it says, This is my beloved Son in whom I am pleased. It's a word of affirmation. Kailangan nyo ng Diyos? Hindi. Kailangan nyo ng Jesus? Hindi. Because He is God. But He is also true human. Kaya affirmation is important. Mahalaga. And I think that's a challenge for us. To affirm our children. Kahit konting improvement, i-affirm natin. Diba, ang problema kasi yung Filipinos, no? It's difficult for us to affirm. Yung affirmation natin sometimes so negative. Tapos pag magalit tayo, degrading yung mga salita. Ang bobo-bobo mo. Tanga-tanga ka kasi. Pag sinabihan mo yung anak mo lagi, araw-araw, ang tanga-tanga mo kasi. Huwag ka mag- Taka pag lumaki, tanga yan. Kasi araw-araw, pinapamukha mo sa anak mo, tanga ako, sabi ni nanay, tanga ako, tanga ako, tanga ako, tanga ako. Affirmation is very important. But the important thing is honest affirmation. Huwag yung bola-bola. Yung problema naman sa atin, affirm tayo ng affirm, kahit hindi naman totoo, affirm ng affirm. Hmm. Kahit sintunado yung anak mo, sabi, ay anak, ang galing-galing mo talagang kumanta. Yan, dyan. Hmm. Kaya push ng push, sige anak, push, sige, ikaw la, ikaw dyan. Kaya kahit ikaw in, den- in denial din. Hmm. Pag sinabi sa school, yung anak mo po ay medyo mahina sa ganito, mga away ka na. Paano ko sinabihan yung anak kong mahina ng ganyan, ganyan? Pag mababa yung grade ng anak mo, hindi in denial ka rin. Kaya susugod ka sa school. Bakit ganito lang yung grade ng anak ko? Diba? Parang minagic lang yung grade. No, lahat na lang eh, sinisi sa school. Sila lang sinisi sa teachers. No? no, we have to be affirming, but we have to be honest with our affirmation. Good job. Kapag nagkamali ng konti, you, you explain bakit nagkamali, but you have to encourage them. That's an act of confirma- affirmation. Maliit na bagay, dyan nagsisimula yung malalaking bata. Diba? Sabi nga ng Milo, big thing starts from small beginning. Diba? Growing up. <laughs> hindi ako endorser ng Milo. Hindi, yung katawan ko hindi dahil sa Milo. <laughs> sa oval team to. <laughs> no. We have to affirm them. No? Let, let them grow with affirmation. So that they will appreciate what they have. Because sometimes when they don't affirm them, kung minsan may mga bagay na meron sila, they don't appreciate it. Because we don't affirm it. Kasi akala natin kasi, kasi ganun din. On the case sa mga, merong mga matatalinong mga anak. Pag nasanay kasi tayo na lagi na lang mataas, so minsan, ay okay. Kasi sometimes yung mga matatilino yung anak nagsasabi, no, I have encountered so many children na top sa school lang. Yung, Lahat ng ginagawa ko pero hindi na-offer ng nanay at tatay ko. Siguro nasanay na tayong matalino yung anak natin. Matalino, kaya hindi na natin tinutulungan. Matalino, kaya hindi na natin ina-offer. Normal na yan. Kaya pag, pag bumagsak doon na tayo nagagalit, hindi na-affirmation. No? Kaya even in the classroom, 
even those intelligent children needs affirmation. Hindi po kayo, ay, kaya niyo na yan, bahala niyo siya siya. So, we have to affirm them. No matter ano yung status ng bata, we have to affirm them. Affirmation is an act of love. And we should affirm, especially those little things that we usually disregard. Don't wait na yung malalaking bagay yung ma-achieve niya before we affirm them. We should affirm the little things that they that they do, that they do best, that they have done something better. Gifts is an act of love. It's a language of love. But what kind of gifts? You know, there are a lot of gifts na hindi kailangan mahal, hindi kailangan malaki. Little things, but could be so significant to your children. Yung aalis ka, pupunta ka ng ibang lugar, bigyan mo lang ng keychain. It's an act of love. Kasi it could tell, it could tell your children, ay, naalala ko ng mama at papa ko. It's an act of love. It's an act of love. Hindi kailangan iPad. Hindi kailangan thousand of pesos na worth, worth of yung, yung rubber shoes niya. Hindi kailangan mamahaling gamit. It's a min- meaningful gift. Di ba kung minsan yung mga great gifts na binibigay sa, natin sa ating mga bata, kung minsan tinatapon lang naman yung hinahagis nila. Kasi we give it na parang walang meaning also. Basta lang. Basta lang nakita mo lang na gustuhan mo, pasuot mo sa anak mo, without meaning at all. You know, pag bumibili, pag bumibili ng nanay, yung nanay ko ng regalo, ng, ng bagong damit sa akin, nung bata kami, lahat, halos lahat kami magkapatid, hindi pwedeng isuot sa ibang lugar, sa, ida, sa ibang okasyon, maliban muna, bago, bago namin isuot doon, dapat isimba muna namin. Dapat isimba namin muna. Kaya nga pag merong damit, naalala ko merong damit, no? Merong kaming katulong. Gusto niyang, gusto niyang isuot na sa akin. Sabi ko sa, hindi pwede yan. Sisimba ko muna yan. Kaya siguro, minsan ako, hinayang-hinayang ako sa mga damit kung kaya yung mga bago, hindi ko nasusot agad-agad. Kasi hinayang-hinayang ako sa mga, yung mga ibang damit ko na gusto kong ulit-ulitin, hindi dahil gusto ko. Kasi parang may, may, meron akong attachment sa damit na itong mga damit na to, alam mo, nag-aaway pa kami minsan ng nanay kasi may nawawala akong damit. Eh. Kasi inanyahanap ko talaga yon Kasi lalo na yung mga damit na binigay niya para suotin ng Pasko, pa, suotin ng New Year, suotin ng Pasko ng pagkabuhay. Inahanap ko talaga yon nung bata ako. At pag mawala yun, ay naku, isang linggong nagwawala ako sa bahay kasi hinahanap ko talaga, gagunguluhin ko talaga. Gift is a language of love if that gift gives meaning, has a meaning. You know, we recall in the account of Jesus, ito yung naalala ko. Jesus was in the temple, in the temple area, with his, about, with his disciples. And then meron sila nakita ang dalawang tao. Yung isang lalaki, yung isa eh, widow. Naghulog sa donation box ng temple. No humulog yung lalaki, ta 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 marami. No naghulog yung babae, ta mahina pa. And then in the, in the, in the discussion of Jesus with his disciples, He told his disciples that the one who gave more is the widow. You know, sa panahon ng Panginoon, yung widow, yun yung, they, they're considered as part of the lower, um, they're part of the lower part of the community or yung mababa yung tingin sa kanila. They look down on widow. Kasi babae, second class citizen na nga, pag widow ka, wala ka pang asawa. So, walang magbubuhay sa'yo. 
Pag lalo na pag wala kang anak. Kasi for them, yung mga widow dapat bubuhayin ng panganay na anak na lalaki. Pag wala kang anak na lalaki, walang mabubuhay sa iyo. At pag ibig sabihin nun, you cannot work. Kasi bawal magtrabaho yung babae. You will rely on begging. Begging for your food. Begging how to live every day. That's why the widow gave more because when she gave No? It has full of meaning. She, have, she has given everything. You know, when we give gifts to our kids or to our children, maganda yung regalong merong, merong meaning. Bakit na-appreciate ng mga bata yung stars nila dito sa kamay from their teacher than yung gifts na binigay mo galing sa mall? Kasi yung mga bata, they know it has meaning, the stars. Yung spam lang, kuminsan nga, wala nang ink eh. Pentel, pentel ang ginamit, hindi magura sa linggo. <laughs> Bakit ganun? Bakit kuminsan na-appreciate? Did you not notice? Mas tuwang-tuwa sila dun sa star. Kaysa dala mo. Kasi yung star, may meaning yun. Bago nilagay yun, they were already, they, they learned already, pag gumawa sila ng good sa school, if they're very good, they did something well, no? They give star. Kaya pag meron silang star, they feel good because they know that they're doing something good. Kumisa tayo kasi parents, right? we thought that di- Pagbigay lang tayo ng bigay, it's already love. Kaya minsan, nasuspoil yung anak natin. Bigay lang ng bigay. Sige, bili. Yan, uwi bili. Yan, bili. Diba? And the gifts that we receive, kahit may meaning, we don't explain why, bakit, ganito. Mahalagang pina-explain natin. Anak, I give you this, so that you will use this, because you need this, because when you have this, you could do this. Mas malagang ganun. The something that we fail to do. I think. Look, at, look into our personal life. Yung mga regalong binigay sa atin last Christmas, na binigay lang, parang corporate gift lang. Mara, hindi nyo pa nabubuksan nga yung iba. Di ba? Yung iba nga, yung nagulat kayo, pagkain pala yun, panis na. May nangangamoy. Ganyan ka, may nangangamoy, nangangamoy. Pero meron na akong puwente. One time, I think few years old, sa gumi, nagbigay sa akin, nakaganyan. Pagbigay ko sa akin, when I was still in the province, sabi ko, sabi ko sa sakit, sabi ko, ito, ah, ilagay mo yan sa ref. Kasi, chocolate, parang ganyan, siguro. Baka Cadbury yun. So, ilagay mo sa ref. The following week, sabi na nagbigay sa akin, ay, Father! Kamusta yung gift ko na natanggap mo ba? Oo, oh, sabi ko, eh, hindi ko natikman. Eh, hindi ko nabuksan. Sabi ko, ah, sabi ko, masarap. Masarap yung gift. Father, bakit? Diba, hindi yung pagkain. <laughs> hindi ba yung pagkain? Sabi ko, may just yun. Kasi akala ko, akala ko chocolate, pinasa ko sa ref. So, kaya sabi, sabi ko, kunin mo yan, malamig pa yung medyas. <laughs> you know, di ba, yung gift na parang walang meaning, It's easy for us to take it for granted. I think when we when we use gift as a language of love, we see to it that the gift that we give, full of meaning, especially to our children. Merong ibig sabi. Kaya nga sabi ko, kahit keychain lang yan, kahit simpleng pagkain lang yan, kahit isang dosen ng donut lang yan, see to it, that it has meaning so that it will be a language of love. Okay, di ba? Sa mga magulang dito, nang nagliligawan kayo, lahat ng regalo niyo, puno ng meaning. Para maramdaman niya na act of love na yun. Sasabihin mo, 
Yan, roses yan. Binili ko pa yan dun sa dangwa. Ang haba-haba ng pila. So, binili ko talaga yan. Yan, kulay na yan. Nag-aagawan pa kami yan. Kasi yan, di ba? You put many on that twelve, or one of that one dozen of roses na binibigay mo. Para nung pag tinanggap ng nililigawan mo, ng misis mo, nung dati, girlfriend mo pa siya. Eh, hindi lang basta roses yun. Those are roses of love. Kaya nga napasagot ka eh. Kahit napasagot ka, yun na pala yung huling at katapusan mong pagtanggap ng roses. Pagkatapos sa santan na lang. Okay ng santan. Kaya kung bugabilian lang binigay sa'yo may tip. So acts of love. Gifts are lang. Gifts are language of love. Acts of service. And acts of service. You know, we look on Jesus. Ano yan? Acts of service. It was not yet a time of Jesus. They were attending a wedding at Cana. You know, yung wedding para sa mga views, take several days of celebration. Minsan niya umabot ng isang buwan. Kaya pag mag-party sila, kailangan hindi lang bote ng wine, kundi galon-galon ng wine. Tapos, pag mag-serve sila ng wine, yung sinister na una, yung masarap. Pag lasing na, eh, serve mo na na kahit ano, okay na yan. Parang tayo din, di ba, minsan? Di ba? Pag maubusan, buksan mo na lang ng dilata, bili ka na lang doon ng, ng manok sa kanto, okay na yan. Busog naman yan sila. O kaya, pag naiinuman na, inumin, pag nagiinuman sa, di ba, nagiinuman kayo dati nung holidays, yung muna, iinumin mo yung mamahaling whiskey o brandy, o kaya wine. Pag wala na, may beer na, pwede na. Pag wala na yung beer, yun, MP light na. Pag wala ng MP light, pag usap, okay na yan, gin na lang. Pag wala ng gin, city, yung alcohol, lagay mo sa supa. <laughs> Parang alak na rin yan. Okay, lasing nga, wala ng pakihala. Inom lang ng inom, kahit ano. Yung iba nga, tubig na lang, kala alak pa rin. No? So, ganyan yung practice nila. And they were attending a, be- a wedding, biglang nagka-problema, no? wala ng wine. And Jesus, and Jesus was not yet doing His public ministry. Hindi pa nagsisimula yung public ministry niya. Sabi ni, ni Mary, yung nanay niya sa kanya, sabi niya, sabi ni Mary sa, sa, sa anak niya, yeah, they have no wine. Simple lang. My son, they have no wine. They have no wine. And then, Jesus, sabi niya, it's not yet my time. Hindi ko pa panahon ngayon. Bakit? It's not my time. Kaya hindi pwede. But because it was Mary was asking him, they have no wine. It was his mother. Kaya pag-anak, mahirap talagang tumanggay. Mahirap tumanggay. Kahit mahirap, kahit hindi pa pwede, pag mahal mo, gagawin mo. What Jesus did, he went at the back, Hinanap niya yung lalagyan ng wine. Meron doon mga, may mga jars. And then he asked the helper, the, yung mga nagsiserve, the helpers, to fill it. Five gallons, I think. Nung binu- pinuno nila, nagdasal siya, and then pinatikman sa, siguro sa, sa nag-insurance ng handaan. And then sabi ng insurance ng handaan, it was a good wine. Kaya nga, appreciate na appreciate. Sabi niya, lasing na sila, good wine pa rin yung siniserve mo. It was the miracle at the wedding, at the wedding of Cana. Bakit ito? It's not about Mary as parent. It's about Jesus. Jesus giving us in sample, pagmahal mo, gagawin mo, kahit ayaw mo pa. And that's love. And that is service. Acts of service. And I think that's a beautiful reminder for us kung kung ano, how we serve our children. You 
So sometimes, parents, akala natin parents, tayo yung sinisirbihan. Diba? Naalala ko yung kwento, sabi ng anak sa nanay, Nay, how many commandments? Ilang bang utos ng Diyos? Sabi ng, sabi ng nanay sa kanya, siyempre anak, sampo. So, sabi ng anak sa nanay, sa nanay pero nay, kung sampu yung utos ng Diyos, mas makapangyarihan ka pa sa Diyos. <laughs> Sabi ng anak na nanay sa anak, bakit naman anak? Eh, Diyos nga yun, dapat siya yung mas, mas, mas makapangyarihan. Kasi yung Diyos, sampu lang yung utos. Ikaw, utos ng utos. Araw-araw, mahigit sampu ang utos mo. <laughs> When was the last time na bigla mo lang pinag-drive yung anak mo dahil may pumuntahan siya? Diba usually convenient? Oh, mag-taxi ka na lang, mag-Uber ka na lang, mag-grab ka na lang. Yung pinag-implan mo siya ng juice. Yung ikaw mismo naghanda ng isusuot niya sa school. When was the last time? Because service is a language of love. Yung kahit pagod na pagod kita sa trabaho, magluluto ka pa rin ng favorite food niya. When was the last time? Kasi if you truly really love the person, kahit masakit, kahit mahirap, you will do it you will serve the person. And I think that is one thing that our children is looking from us. Yung extra service na tinatawag. Hindi yung regular service. Yung extra service when we go beyond what is normal. Yung bigla na lang, ay anak, huwag ka mag-school bus ngayon, ihatid kita. I think that's one thing that We are being reminded today by the Lord. When you love the person, hindi naman kailangan na madali yung gagawin eh. Pag mahal mo yung tao, you don't consider kung madali yung mahirap. Because when you love the person, you will do everything to that person. Lalo na sa mga anak niya. Diba? Then like example, in the classroom, meron talagang hindi pare-pareho niyang level of of learnings nila. Di ba? If you love your students, kung ikaw ay teacher, ah, kahit paulit-ulitin mo, okay. Kahit isang estudyante na lang, one plus one, three, hindi, two, one plus, ah, kahit isang linggo kayo mag one plus one, hindi yun mahirap if you love your student. Pero pag hindi, pag dalawang ulit, pangatlong ulit, dito punta ka doon kay mamo, doon ka sa kabila, doon ka kay teacher mo. And I think also parents, we're encouraged to to do acts of service. Pero, meron tayong anak, hindi para tayong paglingkuran. Yan dapat yung concept. Yung concept dapat na hindi natin ilagay lagi sa... Kasi akala natin, eh dapat may anak ko ako kasi para pag tumanda ako, meron mag-aalaga sa akin. Sana caregiver yung kinuha mo. You know, I have a beautiful encounter with my father. I was graduating from the- theology. And then, I was the eldest. I am the eldest. No? Di ma kami magkakapatid anin na ngayon. Meron kaming regalo sa Diyos na isa, six years old. So, anin na kami ngayon. But during that time, di ma pa lang kami. So, nang lima kami, I was the eldest. I was studying USD. Although wala kami tuition fee sa USD, pero mahal pa rin yung binabayad ko sa seminary. Parents ko yung nagsusupport sa akin. Wala akong benefactor. Merong tumutulong na kamag-anap just for my allowance and the rest shoulder na ng parents ko. So yun, yun, yun naman yung eldest. Siguro, sino yung mga eldest dito, tas kamay? Yung eldest dito, ayaw mo. Hindi naman ibig sabihin matanda ka. <laughs> eldest lang. Yun. Yung mga eldest, di ba? Yung mentality ng eldest, we tend to be, to act as if that we are parents also. 
Kaya kung minsan yung asta natin sa bahay, parang tatay din, parang nanay din eh. Kasi eldest nga tayo. No, sabi ko sa, sa dad ko, we were talking over the phone. Sabi nga, oh dad, I, I'm thinking of leaving the seminary for a while. Because I want to work. Tanong ng dad ko kaagad sa akin, bakit gusto mo magtrabaho? Ayaw mo na magpare? Sabi ko, hindi naman ayaw ko magpare. Gusto ko naman, pero gusto ko lang magtrabaho. Sabi niya, bakit? He, came, he was asking me, bakit? Sabi ko si dad, sabi ko nun, I've studied already for a long time. Uh, kasi pagkatapos ng theology ko, meron pa akong license, dalawang taon, tatlong taon pa yun. Pero around, in the seminary, the USC, I was already studying for seven years. So sabi ko, that seven years na ako sa USD, sobrang gastos na. So I want also to help my brothers and sisters, my brothers and sisters. No? Gusto kong magtrabaho at tumulong sa family. Gusto kong maghanap ng pera, ibibigay sa family. And during that time, we were experiencing financial problem. Ano sabi ng dad ko? And it touched me. At ito yung dahilan bakit hindi ako lumabas. Sabi niya, You know, sabi niya, you know, anak, yung papaaral sa sa mga kapatid mo, obligasyon ko yun. Hindi mo yun obligasyon. Medyo emotion. <laughs> At sabi niya pa sa akin, huwag kang lumabas ng seminary dahil gusto mo akong tulungan. Kasi hindi ako humihingi ng tulong sa iyo. Mas masaya ako na kahit nahihirapan ako, maabot mo yung gusto mo. And from then on, hindi na ako nag-argue sa daddy ko. Madalas na sinag-argue ako eh. At madalas, when I was growing up, gusto ko ako yung nananalo over my dad. And during that time, I keep quiet. And I said, okay dad, next year, I will enter again the seminary. At tuloy-tuloy na until I became this. And I think, That encounter with my dad lead me into a, a understanding of what a parent should be. Kasi lagi kasi tinuturo for us Filipinos, yung anak, dapat maglilingkod sa magulong. Yes, dapat naman talaga. Dapat naman talaga. But children could fulfill that obligation if parents truly serve their children also. If we truly serve our children from our heart, kahit hindi na, na, hindi na sasabihin ng magulang na maglilingkod yung anak sa magulang, pag sila'y tumanda, gagawin yun ng anak. Gagawin yun ng anak. We don't have to tell our children every day, anak, pag tumanda ako, ikaw mag-alaga sa akin. By doing a language of love, which is act of service, we could teach our children and we could tell them that they should also do acts of service to others and to us. Siguro yun yung, siguro yun yung laging ilagay din natin when we guide our children how to do service as an act of love. Huwag naging may kapale. Kasi lagi kasi tinuturo sa, parang tinuturo sa atin, pag nagbigay ka, dapat mayroong kapale. Acts of service. Hmm? Kahit hindi, kahit, kasi minsan, kasi ganito yung ginagawa natin, minsan, it's all reward and punishment yung laging ginagawa natin. Pag maganda, ginawa mo, isiserve kita. Pag hindi, dead maka. Ganon sa bahay. Kaya, sasabihin mo, anak, o oh, sige anak, maganda yung grade mo, ipagluluto kita. Pero pagbagsak, magbukas ka ng dilata, mag-isa ka dyan. You know, true service, walang condition. Kaya nga, it's an act of love, it's a language of love. Kasi galing sa puso. And then we don't aspire anything in return. I think this one thing that we are being encouraged, that we, that we are being challenged in this present time, na halos na tayo dito sa Metro Manila, especially Metro Manila, 
busy how we could do service to our children kahit walang hindi kahit hindi mataas yung grade kahit ordinary moments I think that's meaningful for us that's meaningful for your children pag may ginawa yung magulang na walang okasyon sa kanila yung service lang na maliliit tipahan ng juice nanonood ng TV no? nanonood ng TV ng anak mo biglang may darating na juice at merienda hindi yung nanonood. Kasi lagi na lang, di ba, pag nanonood ng TV, ano sabi, nanonood ka naman ng TV! <laughs> so, lagi ganun yung eksena. Eh. So, ha? TV naman ng TV. Computer lang ng computer. Tablet lang ng tablet. Ibahin natin yung eksena minsan. One time, darating tayo, nanonood siya ng TV, punta ka ng kusina, maganda ka ba. Anak, merienda mo, andito na. Di ba ganun? Acts of service. Bakit? We go back to our personal life. Your personal relationship. Nung wala pa kayong pamilya, nung nangliligaw ka pa, di ba? Tagamalab- tagamalabon ka. Tagakainta siya. Susunduin mo pa dito sa malabon. Ihatid mo sa paranyake. Kasi doon nagkaratabaw bago ka pumunta sa trabaho mo. Kaya napasagot mo. Kasi that you serve the person you love. Na kahit hubos na yung sweldo mo sa, sa panggas, sa toll gate, ginagawin, hindi ka nagre-reklamo. Because it's an act of love when you serve them. I think that's a challenge for us. Maybe we, we review our, our relationship with our children. Kailan yung huling pinaglingkuran ko yung anak ko na walang dahil hindi dahil kung ano-ano yung mga dahilan. Hindi, basta gusto ko lang. Especially in ordinary moment. That's the challenge for us. Hindi kailangan graduation. Hindi kailangan merong award. Maybe next week, Monday, pag-ising niyo sa umaga, oh, iba yung breakfast ngayon. O kaya pagbukas ako, hindi man siya nag-breakfast na ganyan, pagbukas niya sa baunan niya, wow, iba. Iba yung baon niya. Yung itlog, hugis araw. <laughs> yung ham, hugis, hugis star. No? O, diba? May mga ganyan, diba? May binibigyan. Yung kanin, hugis kabayo. Paano ba yun? <laughs> those little things are acts of service. And those acts of service is a language of love. Those are languages. Those are language of love. Okay, the last thing. Ay, na, na, the last thing. Sorry. Quality time. Yon quality time. We look at Jesus. What's quality time? You know, imagine, three years lang ng Panginoon doing His public ministry. Three years lang. He died 33. He started his ministry at the age of 30. Three years lang. But you know, it was a quality time. Hanggang ngayon, ramdam natin. Hanggang ngayon, kilala na natin siya. And we're still following his way of life. Three years lang yun. But the impact of the Lord to His disciples, to His apostles, was so great that until now, we are reaping, we are enjoying the impact of the Lord. You know, if you want to be a true Christian parent, a parent who lived the gospel of Jesus, dapat We, we know how to spend quality time. You know, quality time pwede sa loob ng bahay. Kahit five minutes lang but quality time. Yung kahit pagdating mo, kahit pagod-pagod ka lang, punta ka doon sa anak mo, upo ka, higa, kwento-kwento. 
Kung minsan nyo, walang topic naman, kwento lang ng kwento. Just quality time. Quality time also is not us communicating, but our children allow us to communicate in us. No, we were talking, we were talking going here, no? Minsa kasi, yung quality time natin, wala masyado, hindi natin ina, hindi yung sa haba eh, but how we spend our time. Minsan, nagma, masyadong magmamadali, wala ng quality time, wala ng hindi, kung ano-ano yung tinuturo natin sa anak natin. Di ba? Anong tinuturo natin? Yung isa ko daw tinuturo daw na ina-encounter natin, pagpinitin ka, suntukin mo. Pag kinalabit ka, sipain mo. Huwag kang maggantihan mo. Kasi sometimes, because of, we, don't, we don't have, we don't spend quality time with our parents, uh, with our children. We, te- we tend to do our parenting uh, uh, obligations so sa madalian. Kasi madali yung turo na revenge eh. Gante. Madali yun. Madali i-explain yun. Pag sinampal ka, sampalin mo rin. Gamitan mo ng sapatos. Isuot mo yung kamay mo sa sapatos. Sampalin mo pa ganyan. O kaya para mas madali, no? habang nanonood ka ng pelikula, may sampalan doon si Maricel, ako si ano na, mga lumang pelikula. Gusto, anak, ganyan, anak, gagawin mo. Ganyan. Sampalin mo, ganyan. Yung lalabas yung bagang niya. Ganyan. Kasi this, parang pag walang quality time, yun, madalian yung tinuturo natin sa anak. Di ba? Ganun, ganun din. Kung may, kung may, kung merong ginagawa sa school, ganun yun, sasabi mo, kasi we don't want to spend quality time. Gusto na yung madali. Anak, tanongin mo si ma'am, magbayad na lang tayo. Oh, magbayad na lang tayo. O kaya tatawa ka. Sa kumari, kumari, may alam pa bang gumagawa ng ganito? Kasi busy ako eh. Magbahayad na lang kami sa project ng anak ko. Dahan na lang natin sa bayad-bayad. Kaya mo ng quality time. Quality time. You know, quality time also is not all about us talking to them, but us listening to them. Kaya mo, ayaw ko, bakit ayaw na ayaw natin minsan yung anak na nagbibigay ng kanilang opinion? Especially for us Filipinos, di ba? Naalala ko, growing up, sabi na naman, usapang matanda to, paso pa sa kwarto. Pero ikaw naman yung topic. <laughs> yung mga anak naman yung topic, di ba? Eh, yung anak ko, ganito, ganyan. Eh, yung sabi na naman, yung anak, tapos sasali ka, usapang matanda to. Tapos, anak yung topic, kami yung topic, tapos, papasok, may usapang matanda. You know, there's a beautiful encounter also with Jesus. I did not uh, have the picture. Yung, alam mo yung loss of the temple? Jesus lost in the temple. Nung nahanap ni Mary, sabi ni Jesus, did you know that I'm doing my Father's will? Hindi sinabi ng, hindi sinabi ng Mary, ang tanda-tan, ang bata-bata mo, ganyan ka namang salita. Hindi na doon. But Mary just keep it everything. He listened to his child, to her, to her child, to Jesus. Keep it in her heart. So sometimes, spreading, sometimes we parents we should be like that. Misa bisi na sabi yung anak natin. Misa pakinggan naman natin. And sometimes children will assert their self, because they're trying to build their character. They're trying to discover their identity. Kaya nga kung bisig kong loss at nalabas, sabi nga na iba, parang bastos na doon si Jesus kay Mary. Hindi. Jesus was trying to, try, trying to assert His identity to Mary. That is not just simply his, her, her son, but he is, he is the Son of God. Gusto natin minsan yung anak natin ganyan, ganito, ganito, pero minsan ayaw din natin sa kanilang, to have their, ayaw natin sila mag-create ang kanilang identity. Kaya lahat pinapakailaman natin. We don't allow our children to, to learn how to decide for themselves. 
Kasi yung quality time tayo, pag may, yung quality time natin kasi na concept sa kanila is laging tayong nasusunod, hindi sila. I think very important yun. Kaya nagkaka- tayo, nagkakaroon tayo ng generation gap, nagkakaroon tayo ng hindi pagkaintindihan ng mga magulang, ng magulang ng anak, kasi ayaw pakinggan ng magulang yung anak. Da- dahil, dahil ganun, yung mga anak din, ayaw din makinig sa magulang. We just tend to talk and talk, and we want others to listen to us, but we don't want others to listen to us. Uh, we don't want ourselves to listen to others. Quality time is all about communication. Quality time is about, it's not just simply, uh, it's, quality time is also communication, but in communication, it's not all, all, of us, all about us talking to them. But it's also us listening to them. That's why when we communicate to God, pag naglalasal tayo, hindi, lahat, hindi dapat tayo lagi nagsasalita lang sa Diyos. Dapat, kalahati nun, yung just din nagsasalita sa atin. And that's a true communication with God. Di ba in, in your relationship with your husband and wife? You have to communicate with one another if you want to have a better relationship as husband and wife. Hindi pwedeng lalaki ng laging nasusunod at napapakinggan. Dapat yung misis din. Ganun din minsan, hindi dapat pwede pag sa loob sa bahay yung nanay ang lagi nasusunod. Kung pwede, dapat yung tatay na papakinggan din. But you're living a family. You're, make, you're, you're building a family in that, in that family, parte yung anak. Yung anak ay hindi dekorasyon. Hindi pang pictorial lang. Kasi akala natin minsan yung anak pang pictorial lang, family picture lang eh. That's why we don't listen to them. I think we have to listen to them. So quality time is spending time with your children. Try to communicate with them heart to heart. Heart to heart. That's why in the three years of Jesus preaching, He was able to do so many things because it was a quality time with His disciples. Another example of quality time. Jesus. Because yung relasyon nila malalim puso sa puso. At the foot of the cross, umiiyak yung nanay. Sabi pa ng anak, sabi lang ng anak, simple words lang. Sabi niya sa nanay at saka yung John, woman, behold your son. John, behold your mother. Lang. Simple words, but full of meaning. Sandali lang yon but it describes so many things. It assured them of so many things. It has given them so many things. Quality time. So maybe when we go home, we try to reflect, how do I spend my time? How could I have a quality time with my children? Paano ba? When was the last time that we listened to our children? Kasi parang every time magsasalita yung anak natin, galit na tayo. Kaya kung isan, kahit, mo, kahit matabang yung luto mo, hindi na nagre-reklamo yung anak mo eh. Kasi pag mag-comment sila, magagalit ka na. Pag sabi, ay kung hindi masarap, hindi ka magluto dito. Ganyan, minsan tayo mga magulang. No? We don't listen. We don't listen. So we try to listen. Mary was standing at the foot of the cross. She was in sorrow. But it was a family, it's a quality time. With his, with her son. That's why she was able to listen. She was able to listen what the Lord wanted her to do. To take her of his, of his disciples, to take care of his people as their mother. And Sean also was listening. Well, and it's just five. So we go, we go back. No? First is acts of, uh, words of affirmation. This is the first language. Affirm. 
Second is gifts. Third is acts of service. And then this, the last time, the last thing is physical touch. Physical touch. It's not just simply saying I love this physical touch. When was the last time you hugged your children? Kahit green ten na. Tumisa may mga mabubulay na rinig. Yung anak ko hindi malambing. Eh bakit? Nung lulumakay ba sila? Malambing ka ba? O, hindi ka rin malambing, di ba? As magulang. Di ba? Kasi pagdating mo sa bahay, bakit ang dumi-dumi ang kalat-kalat? Ganyan-ganyan, ganyan na. Magulang na eh. Ano na? Ganyan na, ganyan-ganyan. So they were, they grew up, ganyan-ganyan. So, akala nila, pag mahal sila ng nanay nila, gumaganyan yung nanay nila, hindi yung hug. Kaya hinahanap nila yung, yung namimiss nila yung bungangan ng nanay nila kaysa yung hug ng nanay nila. So, when was the last time you hug your children? Or you kiss your children? Or yung gabi, kahit tulog sila, you, you show him, good night, anak, hinahalikan mo yung anak. When was the last time? Sa session na to, hindi yung anak lagi may kasalanan. Iniiba ko lang yun. Sa session na to, magulang lagi may kasalanan. <laughs> Kasi diba, lagi na lang narinig natin, kayo mga anak, huwag yung hintayin yung huling panahon para magsabi ng I love you sa inyong mga, sa inyong mga, sa inyong mga magulang, to say, to, 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 to hug your parents, to be with your parents. But, this time, I'm asking you, we try to ask in a, in a different, ano, in a, we try to say, do this in a different perspective, in the perspective of par- parents listening, trying to reflect and trying to recall what they're doing. When was the last time you hug you, your children, you say, you kiss your children, you say, I love you to your children. When was the last time? Lalo na yung mga, yung mga bata, Okay, madalas nyo pa nyo sabihin, I love you, anak. Especially yung mga high school. Yung junior high. Yung mga grade 7, 8, 9, 10. When was the last time you hugged them? Kahit ayaw nila. Kasi yung iba, no? kasi ano, nagbibi na ta, nagdadala, ayaw na magpahalik. Ay, kahit sa loob lang ng bahay. When was the last time? I think siguro assignment niyo yan. Pag uwi niyo sa bahay, ihag niyo ang anak niyo kahit wala. Kahit naglalaro ng computer, kahit ayaw mo siyang nakikitang naglalaro sa, sa harap lagi ng computer o sa naka... Ihag mo yung anak mo. Ihag mo lang. Pagkatapos yung anak, pagkatapos yung hug, nagkocomputer siya, bigla mo siyang ihag. Kakabahan niya yung anak mo baka na mamaalam ka na. <laughs> Kasi, unusual eh. So, we try to do that. Physical touch. You know, the, the story of the prodigal son. Yung prodigal son, lumayas, inuha yung mana niya, winaldas, nagutom, naalala yung bahay nila, maraming pagkain doon umuwi. The first thing that the father did to his son is to embrace the son. Bago siya nagsalita, embrace the son. And there's a beautiful act. There's a beautiful encounter in the gospel. The father did not wait doon sa, sa pintuan ng bahay niya. He ran. Tumakbo. And he hung his son. Physical touch. Physical touch could have is a language of love because it is a concrete manifestation of love. A beautiful example of concrete manifestation. Pag hinang mo yung tao, ibig sabihin, mahal mo. Kasi parang you're trying to protect him. Hmm? Yun yung hug. Hmm. 
another encounter with Jesus where I think there's a physical touch. This encounter. Jesus carrying on the cross carrying the cross on the way to Calvary. And then she met women of Jerusalem. And part of the part of those women is Mary. Mary was the, was one of them. And there are a lot of pictures that Mary was while well, Jesus hanging there was Mary was holding the hands of Jesus. Mary was hugging her son. And I think one thing that will, will this images should tell us, no? Pag down na down na yung anak natin, the more that they need our physical touch, the more that they need our love. You know, so maybe some of, some, of par- some, some parents na nandito ay are disciplinarian. Gusto natin ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. Gusto natin di numero, ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. But when our, when our children are so down, we go away with rules. We set aside the rules inside the house. We try to comfort our children first. Hug them first bago mo pagalitan. Kiss them first bago mo sumbatan. You know, as a priest, no? may mga lonely times kami tinatawag. Yung bigla na lang ako, several times it's happened to me. Bigla na ako, nandun ako sa loob ng kumbento, sa loob ng kwarto, nandun na TV, at bigla na lang nararamdaman mo, nalungkot ako. Yung walang kadahid dahilan. Maybe because we, most of the time, we live alone. We do things alone. Nalungkot ako na parang, minsan nagugulat, There was a time, one time, nagulat ako. Tumulo lang yung luha ko sa, ba, sa mata ko at biglang lungkot na lungkot ako. Tatawag ko yun sa bahay tapos maya-maya susunduin na ako niyan. Tapos yung gagawin ko lang dun sa bahay, kung saan yung mami ko nandun sa sofa, nandun ako nakahiga lang sa kanya. Because for me, the touch of my mother, the touch of my father, gives me strength. Renewed my energy. Kaya pagkatapos yan, after an hour or two, kakain ako ng lunch, sasabi niyo, Dad, hatid mo na ako dun sa parokya. Hatid na naman ako nun. Tapos magkikita na ako yun after a week naman. Kasi for me, important sa akin yung touch ng magulang. Kaya nga, um, kaya nga hindi ko pa, ayaw kong imagine na mawala yung magulang ko sa akin. Kasi parang sabi ko, ang hirap. Ang hirap i-imagine. Kasi their touch, their presence is a source of strength in my ministry as a priest. Kaya, siguro, this is a challenge for us. Kasi, when we consider the physical touch as, as an act of love, we see to it that it goes beyond what we are doing. Kasi love naman kasi is, is not just giving what they that they should owe that we should what they what they should receive but it is going beyond kaya sa may ba may mga encounter no i'm not praying that it will happen to your children pag may ginawang hindi maganda sasabihin mo lumayas ka lumayas ka umalis ka dito wala kang kwentang anak Rather than doing that, we do all, we show them our physical touch. Hug them. Kaya nga umuwi dahil kailangan ka. Kaya nga umuwi dahil alam nilang magbibigay ng lakas para harapin yung pagsubok ng buhay nila. I think that's a challenge for us, especially this time. Hindi, hindi natin kinukonsinti yung mali ng, mag, ng anak. We should not do that. 
But rather, before telling them what is right and wrong, we should first show them that despite that they're wrong, despite that they have done something bad, we're here because we love them, we will we are here to a journey with them, to accom- to accompany them so that they will be able to correct what they have done. Or to help them rise up because they have fallen. Yun yung challenge sa atin. Kasi, yung tendency naman kasi natin umisan, sobrahan naman yung physical touch, acts of service, gifts, we try to be consentidor as parents. No? You know, I work also this with schools. No? Maraming mga magulang na ganyan. Maybe siguro, sabi ko nga, may, may reflection is, maybe the parents before, ganito yung sistema nila, ayaw nila mangyari sa anak na ganito. So that's why they become so overprotective na lahat na lang, eh, gusto lang nilang i-protect yung anak na walang hindi iniisip kung anong mabuti at anong, anong maganda. No, I was had encounter, kinder, kinder one yung anak. Uh, where you're already announcing the the medal, the reward, uh, the awards. Pag kinder kasi paramihan yan, eh, maraming binibigay na award, lahat na lang, mos, mos, mos lahat. Pag, sa amin kasi pag grade 3 na, wala nang ganyan, tinanggal na yung lahat. No? Pag high school na, wala na talagang ganyan, ganyan. E yung kinder lang, sige, kahit anong most, most beautiful, most handsome, most ano, lahat na lang. Best in, best in, at pwede na parang beauty contest, best in swimswear. <laughs> so lahat, so one time, mayroong magulang, pumunta sa teacher, reklamo, bakit daw, at apat lang yung ribbon ng anak niya. Eh, yung anak niya kasi malikot. Umakit ng bintana. Totoo yan. Diba, teacher? Totoo yan. May mga batang parang Spider-Man. Minsan nandun na sa taas ng aparador. Sa taas ng cabinet. Tatalo na lang. Ah! Tapos yung anak niya, pagpasok sa school, puti yung polo. Paglabas ng school, brown na. Hmm. Pero magaling maglaba yung anak niya, ng nanay niya. Kasi every time pumasok, puti-puti naman talaga. Galing talaga nakukuha yung brown. Every day, ganun yung routine. So ganun, kasi talaga, eh, yung kinder, syempre, you learn and play, no? Usually, you know, So, hindi lang talaga play. Gumugulong pa sa, sa floor. Kaya makintab yung tiles nila dun eh. May gumugulong na bata. Kaya minsan hindi nila gumagamit ng play mat. Kasi malinis na yan. Dinulungan na yan. <laughs> oh, yan. So, punta. Sabi ng... Eh, yung policy namin is after na mapermahan ko as school director the, the, the award. Wala nang pagbabago. Wala nang idadagda. Kung meron mong bagbabago, ako madadaan na sa opisina ko kasi ako the last one, I already signed it. So, pumunta yung teacher sa akin, Father, gusto kong kausapin ni Mrs. Ganyan kasi daw yung anak. Bakit? Ano ba yung anak? That's why I learned about the, the child. Kasi ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. Nung pumunta yung parents sa akin, sabi ko sa kanya, oh, sige, uh, what, anong, anong problema? Kasi daw, bakit na yung iba, maraming ribbons, maraming medals, yung anak niya, apat lang. So, sabi ko, bakit? Ah, ah, sabi niya, bakit ba? Eh, sabi niya, kawawa naman yung anak ko, ganito, ganito lang. Eh, si, na medyo hindi maganda yung pagsasabi niya. Medyo nailita ka ng konti. Nailita din yung pari. Minsan, nagagalit din. Minsan, sumisigaw pa. Yeah. Sabi ng, sabi ko sa nanay, o oh, sige, o oh, sige, sige, bigdagdagan natin. Most behave, lagay natin. Most neat, nilagay natin. Oh, oh. Most, uh, uh, anyway, most uh, well-groomed, nilagay natin. Father, hindi naman yan. Nakakahiya naman yung bihim. Eh, yan na lang. Eh, yan yung gusto kong ibibigay sa anak mo eh. Sabi niya, Father, hindi naman siya bihim eh. O, oh, hindi wala nang bihim. Father, marumi na yung ano. Oh, hindi siya well-neat. Okay. Oh, hindi siya well-groomed. O, oh, di. O, oh, anong ibibigay ko? Yan ang available. <laughs> Diba? Kasi kuminsan, sa sobrang nating konsente, lokohan na lang. 
Loko ka na lang. No? Sige, bigay na lang dahil kahit hindi totoo. So, sometimes parents are like that in a school. No? I hope, sana wala dito sa St. Francis, no? ng ganyan. Kasi marami ako, rather than, uh, ano ba, rather than, kinukonsiti natin by gifts or by so many things na acts of love natin. Hindi ganon. We see to it that gifts, this service, this physical touch will remind them that uh, they should aspire to be better, to be good. So, hindi ito yung ikukonsinti yung kamalian nila, but rather help them to be a better person, to have a better future, to be able to understand everything in the, ni- in the right way and truthfully. No? I think that's a challenge for us as parents. So how do I measure my success as parents? How do I measure my success as parents? I encountered the words of Mother Teresa. My Mother Teresa said, it's not just about parents. God has not called me to be successful. He called me to be faithful. You know, as parents, we should we don't we should not aspire to be successful parents, but rather we should be aspired. We should aspire to be faithful parents. And what does it mean, faithful? Faithful to the love of Jesus. Faithful to the love that we have in our heart. Faithful to our love for our children. Because when we are faithful, we will love them in the right way. We will teach them in the right way. We will be there for them in the right way. Faithfulness is the measure of how good we are as parents. You know. So, the, I think that I have said already a lot. Dal-dal ko no. Na, it's just a five simple acts. But those five things could be languages of love. And we are doing this already. Ginagawa na natin to. We just try to modify it, try to reflect on it, to be better. So that we will be able to express more our love to our children. And Rest assured, no? if we are faithful to that kind of love, to the love that Jesus has showed us, we will be in the right track, bringing up or guiding our children well. No? So, siguro, eh, we have enough time pa naman. As I said earlier, this is not about doctrine of, of the church. It's all about how Jesus loved and how we could use the love of Jesus to be a loving parent to our children. I'm not an expert of being a parent, sabi ko nga. Kasi kahit chismis, wala ako na meron akong anak. But my experience as a child no? to my parent no? No? help me in my reflection on how to be a parent to, to our children or to your children. As the school director also helped me also. So maybe uh, questions or uh, no, reflections no? reflections uh, on, on the discussions that we have. I hope it helps. No? I hope it helps. Uh, there are so many things that we could still discuss. There are so many things that I want to share. Pero pag marami kasi Kuminsan wala namang mga re-reading. Eh. No, just, but pag marami kasi parang it's been, parang hihirap i- i-digest. So I think we have to, uh, if you have something to share, also your experience as a parent, no? to other parents, something that, for example, there's a five languages of love. Maybe we could share what we, how do we do those things to other parents kasi we're here to learn from one another. No? Hindi lang ako yung dapat yung Kasi dapat we share. Kasi dapat yung parenting naman kasi hindi lang yung expertise ng isang parent yun. Eh. Kundi is a 
hindi yun, wala tayong monopoly of ex, uh, monopoly of knowledge of how to raise our children we try to share it with others no? maybe some are some here are not just parents some here are grandparents no mas season yon season na 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 magulang kasi meron ng apo apo sa tuhod apo sa talampakan apo sa ingron no? So there's a microphone in uh, at the middle with our president. Uh, hello, hello. Good morning, Father. Yes, actually, I know. I just want I have uh, something to share, and I would like to ask you a question. <laughs> I know, uh, Father. I know. What really the most the most I know the good the part of your lecture that really hit me was your uh, point number two. Uh, make your gifts meaningful. That's uh, no, that really that really hit me. It really gave me something to think about, especially this Christmas season. Kakatapos na ng Christmas season, and this season is a time where we give a lot of gifts to all our. No, sometimes we na natin iniisip bigyan tayo ng bigay, especially among parents where they give a lot of expensive gifts. Meron mga parents na bibigyan ng mga tablets, mga laptop, computers, all this. And what's sad about it is, marami mga, ano, bata na sanay na sanay na lang sila na nakakatanggap ng mga expensive gifts na that they took it for granted. Oh, especially my friends who are, I have some friends who are, ano, well-off, well-off people. At talaga yung e-sport nila. And they have no time. They spoil their children. So for those kinds of parents na nasanay na magbigay ng mga expensive gifts sa mga bata, how do they make those gifts meaningful again? I think one thing yung, yung yung experience ko no, no as a kid no yung mga gifts kasi yung mga gifts ay yung mga yung mga things na binigay sa magulang sa akin that are meaningful are those things that they give it and they explain to me why they gave it to me sometimes kasi yun yung act of giving na, na hindi nagagawa the reason why we give gifts why why we buy this why they should have this kasi yung tendency kasi yung usually siguro ng parents is Uh, they say, kailangan nila. Sige, bigay na lang, ganyan, ganyan. But sometimes kasi we forget, bakit, bakit mo binigla ng damit? Bakit mo binigla ng damit? Bakit, bakit kailangan mo ng tablet? Ano yung purpose ng tablet? Bakit mo binigay sa kanya? Diba? Kaya kung minsan yung tablet is not being used well, kasi nung binigay natin, hindi mo naman in-explain eh. Like, Like disciplining our children, no? you know, di ba? You discipline your children. Pag sinabi yung anak, don't play outside. But every day your your child will play outside. Every day you will so anak don't play outside. Bagagalit ka na magalit. Kasi walang walang reason. Bakit hindi pwede sa labas? Kasi ang gamdun nata don't play outside. We don't share the why. Bakit hindi pwede? But once you explain to your child, anak, huwag pwede sa labas kasi pag, may, pag nasa labas ka, baka hindi mo marinig yung mga sasakyan, mabilis, mabangga ka, at kung maabangga ka, baka mabali yung paa mo, or whatever, ganyan, madislasya ka, gagastos tayo sa hospital, whatever. Papasok yun. Papasok yun, I think. Papasok yun. The way we learn things in our life, Not just as even as parents, no? how we learn. Yung bagay na naiiwan sa atin that we we hold on on our life are the things that were that those those things are well explained to us. Kaya pinanghawakan natin, kaya naiintindihan natin. I think gifts should be when we give gifts should be like that. Kaya sa yung example ko kanina, yung corporate gifts, yung binibigay ng bangko, ng company mo, ng ano ko minsan. Hindi mo na. Kasi minsan naman yung gifts nila, hindi naman pinag-iisipan. Di ba? Bibigyan ka ng bolpe. Eh dami, ang dami mo namang bolpe. Uh-huh. Bigyan mo ng payong. Ay lahat na lang ng ano, payong binibigay. Kaya yung nakalib- bigyan mo ng kalendaryo, ilang kalendaryo nang meron ka. Pwede ng wallpaper. Di ba? Kaya hindi, walang meaning na. Kaya we, we tend to uh, throw it away or set it aside. Kaya this may I was sharing, kahit simple gifts lang. Kahit simple gifts lang. Kahit keychain lang. Kaya nga. Alam mo, you go to Cebu. Example, no? 
And then you pass by a store, may souvenir shop, nakita yung keychain. And then, that's why yung ganun. Kaya that's why, dapat may meaning, dapat yung gifts na binibigay, pinag-iisipan. Especially to our children. So, ay anak, naalala kita, di ba mahilig ka kumain ng ng watermelon. Oh, ayun sa Cebu ako nakita ko yung yung kitchen ng watermelon. Naalala talaga kita. Kaya ay heavy nili ko to para sa iyo. It's more meaningful than bilhan mo ng bagong sapatos na branded doon sa mall. Ayun, ayun na pasalubog mo, ayun sa iyo para ayun sa iyo. I think mas meaningful, mas matatanda niya bakit meron akong kitchen. Kaya minsan sira na yung sapatos, yung kitchen niya nakasabit pa rin sa bag niya. Nakasabit pa rin sa, sa door niya. So, talaga, it's very important po na you give this pen. One thing I also took, took from your, ano, from your advice, Father, was the fact that, ano, na, pa, sa pag explain mo sa bata, you also give time. Yeah. You also spend time with them. So, it's like giving two words in one Yeah, so, so it's also quality time. At sa pa, ano, uh, you, uh, tapos, you don't have to spend so much to please your child. Kasi by giving them your time, kahit mura lang yung gifts, the child will pressure the, the gift. Hindi kaya na maging laptop, hindi kaya na maging branded na item, hindi kaya na maging tablet po. Yeah. Even attending this session is already a gift to the Attending the, the school activity. I think... Um, hey, I appreciate the presence of the parents is here. It's spending quality time. Even your children is not here, it's already a quality time with them. Because they know that you're doing this for them. You're doing this for them. Hindi yung dahil magkaroon sila ng plus five. Okay. We still have a little more time. No? Any of the parents or the teachers who would like to ask Father oh, Ryan? Anything that is in their hearts? Excuse me. Sino po? Paano patayin? Ako, grade 1, advice advisor po, Father. Yes, yes. Last Christmas po, meron po kami ano, play, mga games, specific Christmas party room po. Patayin lang yung team. Tapos po, I observe po yung students ko, syempre po yung mga gifts nila, natanggap sa parents po nila, eh, mas mahal po, matutuusin. Pero I decided po na ibigay sa kanila as souvenir po, Christmas gift for the teacher. Ganun po kasi, Father, every classroom advisors, they give for the children. Close to the TV. Because there's a book that I'm going to find. Because I'm going to deliver. And it's like, I'm going to say, children, I know my mom has a wallet, coin purse from your father and mother. But I'm going to give you the teacher, how to do it. Same lang. Not same price. But the effort of mine, I'm going to give you the emojis. Happy day. Be happy. I'm going to give you the smiley. Tapos po, and then it's made na po sa kanila. Then it's reviewed ko na pa isa-isa ng class number. Class number 1 up to 20 tayo po. Nung ma-receive po nila, alam po nila yung importance ng binigay ng teacher. Hindi siya si Mara ng iPad, ng cellphone, pero po, na-realize nila na, oh wow, na yun, alala po na tayo ng teacher. Ganun po, something that we need to see to show the feelings na gano'n man po kami effort, uh, expensive yung binigay mo. The importance is, alam po nila kung paano ka alala. May student po ako yung si Sari. Alam niya po yung feeling na na-receive niya yung gift na yun. Tinong ka po siya. Okay. Yeah. Diba, I, was, I was telling already, oh, well, I wouldn't know so, but yung stamp, yung stamp ng teacher, appreciate masyado ng bata kasi alam nila yung meaning nun. Alam nila how they get. Uh, how, what does it mean? Kaya yung ibang nga ayaw patanggal, di ba? Naliligo. Alam may 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 younger sister, is six years old. Nung nag-aral siya, gumaganyan siya pag naliligo. <laughs> Kasi ayaw niya patanggal yung star. Kasi tuwang-tuwa siya, that was the first time na pumasok sa school, and then umuwi siya, may star. First time niya, ayaw niya paligo. Sabi niya, patanggal mo yan, baka sabi ng mga ulang teacher, hindi ka, hindi ka naliligo, ilang linggo na. Kasi di nga talaga pinoprotect niya yung star. Kasi pag magbasa, syempre matatakal. Because they know the meaning of it. No? They know the meaning of it. And I think, yun yung importante. Meaning, pwede, hindi ibig sabihin na hindi pwede magbili ng mahal na regalo. Pwede. Pero see to it, it's meaningful to your children. Meaningful. Na hindi lang, hindi lang ngayon, kundi para magamit nila din sa araw-araw nila. Bilang, kaya, 
when we give, no kahit mahal, okay lang. Basta meaningful. Bilhan mo ng stocks. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Bilhan mo ng ginto. <laughs> no? Kasi, kung bibilhan mo naman ng ginto o whatever, pag walang meaning, makawawala yan. Di ba? Kahit kayo na lang nga eh. Nung nagpakasal kayo, kasi syempre, nagsasahib kayo yung, yung wedding ring nyo, hindi gaano pa. Hindi naman gaano ka mahal. Di ba? Hindi naman gaano ka mahal. No? Pero, ayaw mo mawala. At nung, siguro may encounter yun ba, yung nawala. Diyos ko, parang mag-iiwalay na kayo, nag-aaway kayo. Kasi mahalaga yun, maraming meaning yun. Maraming meaning yun. Maraming meaning yun. No, one thing, ako, meron akong bagay na, 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 hindi na naman bagay na binigay siya. Pag meaningful yung bagay, kasi ang hilap mo mawala. Meron akong rosary na hawak-hawak, high school pa ako. Alam mo, one time, naiwan ko sa bahay na bakasyon ako sa probinsya, bumalay naman nila, I realize, ero plano, wala akong rosary. So, hinanap ko, sabi ko sa mami, hanapin sa buong bahay, bukas na bukas, ipa-LBC mo. Kasi meaningful yun sa akin. Lagi yung kasama yun. Eh, yung rosary na yun, is a unique, hindi yun important, local lang yun. Uh, seed yun, na habang tumatanggal, lalo siyang kumikintab at kumikintab. Kasi, magsisimula yun ng parang magaspa. Makintab na siya, no? Pakita ko sa inyo. No, it's not white, it's two. Yan siya. Brown siya, seed siya. Pero yung kulay niya ito is light brown pa siya. Yung bagong parang bagong kakoy lang. Kaya habang tumatagal yan, pag ginawa ka mo habang tumatagal, kumikintab siya at kumikintab. Kaya alam mo yung rosary bago, hmm? hindi dahil marumi yung kamay ko ha, kaya umitim na umitim. <laughs> yun. Ganun siya kami. Kaya nung time na yun na nawala, nung one time na iwang sa bahay, kung ka albisi tal, sabi na nanay ko, sa ano na lang, may rosary ka pa naman dyan? Sa ano na lang, eh, mag... sabi ko, hindi. Sabi ko, padala mo yan, padala mo yan. Kasi hindi ako mapakali pag wala yan. This is as meaningful to me. No? Kaya kasi, ganun din. No? Hindi, may level of sentiment, may, may pag-sentimental tayo sa mga bagay, pero I think we use our being sentimental to things with, with the things that, that is given to us with meaning. And I, I think we could use it as parents also. Meron pang ba? Sige, we try to share God. Hindi kailangan magtatanong. Yes. Good morning. Morning. Hindi na po yung mention of Bible is the importance of all the stuff that the teacher gives to their children. My daughter was so happy every time she received a stuff. Pero kaya lang yung stocks is always related to academic excellence. Not hindi nabibigyan ng stock yung mga bata if they behave properly, if they have good manners, or if they say po at oo. So maybe it should impart also to the teacher that stocks not only for academic excellence. But when the, the bata nagsabi siya ng po at oo, or she behaves properly, or she gets her food ng tama, dapat the bata should be given the stock also. Okay? Okay. O, oh, teacher, maminig kayo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dapat naman ganun. Pero maybe because siguro yung environment is, pero yung pag-school talaga is, siguro yung environment, especially for us here in the Philippines, is really academic, it's an academic uh, environment. That's why my topic on that is, it's an example related to being a parent naman. Parang, uh, yun nga, we reward them, we give them gifts, uh, not just because yung uh, they're doing something good. Kahit walang, wala silang nagagawa, kahit, kahit nakaupo lang or ano, no, we should still give them gifts. But we see that the gifts has meaning. The gifts has meaning. Hindi yung basta-basta magbibigay lang. Kaya ang mas maganda, and then, when you give gifts, when they are not doing well, or, or kung wala silang ginagawa, minsan is nagiging meaningful pa nga eh. Kasi, so all, out of the, out of nowhere, darating ka, medyo meron ka dalang regalo sa kanya. Na gano'n, na biglang, hindi naman dahil mataas yung grade niya, hindi naman dahil ano. No? Basta, no? we try to, I think, uh, we could relate siguro yung suggestions ni, 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 uh, ni Mrs. No? 
especially with words of affirmation, your first language, words of affirmation, that we, we don't only... Kasi gifts is, is a form of affirmation also, pero mas maganda yung words of affirmation na hindi lang siya pag may ginagawa na ganitong aspeto, kundi lahat ng aspeto ng buhay ng bata, ina-appreciate kate. And that also be a gift. No? It could be also a gift. Actually, itong limang languages na to are interconnected. Kaya sabi nga ni, ni Mr. President, no? sometimes we're hitting ano, two birds with one stone. Kasi, kasi interconnected ito. Eh. When you give, you, when you affirm, it could be also a quality time. And our, our, our affirmation also could be physical touch. And it could be also a gift to them. Huh? And so on and so forth. So, thank you for, for that. Ano. Kaya, ma'am. It's something that we should analan. Meron pa? Sharing, sharing. We do sharing or insights. Yes, uh, sir. Ah, yes, ma'am. Ay. Ah, si sir. Yes, good morning, Father, yes. and the teachers and parents. I would like to share about the quality time and to take this opportunity to impart uh, the quality time that most solo parents uh, have concerned with, especially those that are working. Mm-hmm. I have encountered uh, solo parent in this uh, in our school, and I admire, I appreciate that parent who had that um, strength in applying for a solo parent ID. I am a public servant, father, a uh, social worker, and I am taking this opportunity to encourage and invite the solo parents because they really need, especially those who are working, they really need the quality time and the, the benefit that they get from being a solo parent are additional live benefits from their employment that maybe some here are not yet aware of. So please feel free to approach our office. Thank you very much. Okay, so you say we could help for parents, especially the solo parents. Uh, dito lang ba yun sa kainta? Yeah. Or dito sa kainta? It's nationwide. Pwede din ako mag-apply? Dear, just it's nationwide, Father. Kasi pwede, pwede ba ako mag-apply? Dear, just kidding. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so, 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 it's nationwide. So, pwede pa lang. So, I think uh, we we have uh, this. I hope that I give, give you some insights already. Uh, not really to be a perfect parent because there's no such thing as a perfect parent. Walang perfectong magulang. But we could have a good, we could be a good parents. No? We could be good parents. Don't aspire to be perfect, but to be good. Okay.